Hello, and welcome to Get Yourself Published, Promote Your Research, a webinar series from the Himmelfarb Library Scholarly Communications Committee at the George Washington University. In this eight-part series, we explore tools, resources, and tips that can help you get your research published and ensure that it is widely read and cited. In our videos, we cover topics ranging from how to spot a predatory publisher to using Covidant software for a systematic review. Our webinars are publicly available and licensed under a CC BY NC SA Creative Commons license. Although some resources discussed in this series are only available to faculty, staff, and students with access to Himmelfarb Library resources. My name is Tom Harrod, and I'm the Research Support Librarian at the Himmelfarb Health Sciences Library. Today's session is called ORCIDs, Maintaining Your Online Identity. My email address is tph at gwu.edu. Please feel free to contact me if you have any questions about the material covered in this presentation. Let's get started. Here's an outline of what I'll be discussing during this session. I'll start with the definition of what an ORCID is. Then I'll move on to the process of getting an ORCID. After that, I'll talk about ways of making the most out of your ORCID, which includes automating the import of articles into your ORCID, as well as the use of your ORCID to assist in the creation of things like the Science CV Biosketch through NCBI. Then I'll have some concluding points. The first thing I'd like to cover is what an ORCID is. ORCID stands for Open Researcher and Contributor ID, and it's a persistent online identifier for a researcher. Basically, the structure of an ORCID is an online CV which links researchers with their scholarly outputs and grants. You are in control of what is viewable on your ORCID account. It is completely self-curated. Here is a screenshot of part of my ORCID profile. Under my name, in the upper left side of the page, you can see the URL which contains my 16-digit ORCID number. Here you can also see part of two of the sections of my ORCID, Employment and Education. Below that are sections for grants and publications, which we'll look at more closely later on. When I created my ORCID, I was guided to input information into all of the various sections. However, as we'll discuss later, it's possible to automate the creation of some portions of the ORCID, thereby minimizing the burden on the ORCID creator. There are a lot of reasons why you would want to create an ORCID account. The first of these is name disambiguation, that is, distinguishing the scholarly contributions among researchers with the same or very similar names. I'll show you an example of that on the next slide. One of the major reasons why people create ORCIDs is that doing so is a requirement of many publishers and federal and private funding agencies. Many journals require all authors on an article to have an ORCID, and some of the major funding agencies like the NSF and NIH require ORCIDs from fundees for some or all of their grants. This trend will likely continue as more and more funding agencies require applicants to have ORCIDs in the future. Additionally, your ORCID can be used to partially auto-populate a number of other online researcher tools like ResearchGate. It can also be used to help you fill in portions of your Science CV biosketch as you are preparing to submit a grant application. Another reason why ORCIDs are popular among people who run departments and labs is that they can be used to track output of past and current students to measure program impacts. As alluded to on the prior slide, here is an example of what I meant by name disambiguation. Here you can see the problem of tracking output from individual researchers with similar or identical names. This is a problem both for the researchers themselves, as well as individuals who are making hiring and or promotion decisions as they try to determine the scholarly output of such a candidate. Connecting one's works to an ORCID is one step to help solve this issue. Getting an ORCID is simple. You just go to ORCID.org and create an account for yourself. After that, you'll need to fill in the various sections of the ORCID and then keep it up to date going forward. However, there are some ways of making that process less onerous. Let's take a look at ORCID now. 
The first step is to search for the ORCID homepage. Here I'll do that through Google. Here's the link I want to go to, orchid.org. And from here, I can register for a new account or sign in to an existing account. So I'm going to sign in to my own Orchid account now. As mentioned before, there are a number of sections to the ORCID. Up here I see my ORCID URL with my ORCID ID, employment, education, and here are the sections below. Works, funding, membership, and service, and so forth. Um, many people have an initial concern that the process of filling in their ORCID account and keeping it up to date moving forward will be excessively burdensome. But I'm going to go back to my ORCID profile and show you how to make the process of keeping an ORCID up to date easier. I'll show you how to bring over publications without having to manually enter all the information. Also, I'll show you how you can delegate ORCID maintenance to someone else. Back on my ORCID page, I will scroll down to the Works section and if I click on Add Works, you'll see some of the ways that I can keep my ORCID updated. Of course, I can add pub publications manually by filling in all of these uh, spaces here. But by selecting the Add PubMed ID, I can do this a lot quicker. So to show you how that works, first I'm going to go to PubMed. And here I'm going to search for an article that I've uh, authored or co-authored. And I am going to scroll down. And this one right here is one that I am a co-author on. So I'm going to click there. And on the subsequent page, you can see the PMID or PubMed ID is listed right here. So the first step I'm going to do is to copy that here. Here I am back on my ORCID page. So I'm going to go down to Works, and under Add Works, I'm going to select Add PubMed ID. And here I'm going to paste in the PubMed ID that I just got, and I'm going to press Retrieve Work Details. On this page, you can see that it's automatically filled in all of the blanks that are required for this record. So, if I was to press Add to List, it would then add this publication to my list of works. In this case, I'm not going to do it because this publication is already listed in my works. Another way to automate this process is to link my ORCID account to my Scopus author profile. To do this, I will go under Add Works to Search and Link. On this page, I'll scroll down, and here you see Scopus Elsevier, so I'm going to click here. I've already linked my Scopus account to my ORCID profile. However, if this is your first time doing this, you may see more than one option based on your name. So what you would do is you would select all the names that correspond to you. So you would match those up by affiliation and subject area and so forth. Uh, as a side note, if your Scopus author profile contains more than one of these accounts, you can contact Scopus and have them combine them into one account. Uh, but in my case, I've already done that. So I'm going to select my name, press Next. Here it, indic it asks me which, uh, how I want my name displayed, so I'll just stick with that. Press Next, and on this page, you'll see it lists the articles that are associated with the author profiles I selected. The default for all of these is to be included. 
However, if I went down this list and found that one of these wasn't me, I can just click the X here. However, this one is mine, so I'm going to leave that. Then what I would do is press Next again. Uh, it shows my profile. Press Next. And then I can send the author ID, put in my email, and it'll connect to my ORCID account. I've already done this, so I'm not going to do that again. But if I go back to my ORCID account, <coughs> And I can look down on my records and see, for instance, the second one, the source is me, but via Scopus Elsevier. So this record was brought in because I connected my Scopus account to my ORCID. And the nice thing about this is this creates a connection between ORCID and Scopus. And so as more articles are added into Scopus, they will automatically be brought into my ORCID. And so this is one of the ways that people automate the maintenance of their ORCID and keep it up to date without having to put in a lot of work. Another thing you can do to minimize the burden of maintaining an ORCID is to delegate that work to a trusted individual. I'm going to show you how to do that. To delegate the maintenance of your ORCID to someone else, Simply click on the drop-down menu by your name in the upper right side of the page. Here I will scroll down to Account Settings. And on this page I'll scroll down and you can see here the organizations that I've connected to my ORCID account including Scopus. And here is where I can add a trusted individual. As a note, trusted individuals must have an ORCID account themselves for this to work, but getting an ORCID account is free and anyone can do that. So I would type in the ORCID ID of the trusted individual and press search. It finds the name and I indicate that it found the correct one. And so here's one that I did before. So once my trusted individual opens up his or her account, uh, they will see a drop-down menu on the left side of the screen where they can toggle between their own ORCID account and my ORCID account. And they will have the full ability to maintain and alter my ORCID account. Uh, so be careful with who you make a trusted individual because they can they will have full permission to do anything to your ORCID account. However, this can be helpful in the case of uh, busy researchers who may have administrative help. They can delegate the maintenance of their ORCID to the administrator who can then be charged with keeping the ORCID up to date moving forward. As mentioned before, your ORCID can be used to help you populate other online platforms such as your Science CV Biosketch, which is required for many grant applications. Also, it can be used to auto-populate portions of online research or social media platforms like ResearchGate. I'm going to take a closer look at how your ORCID can help you to create Science CV profiles. Now I'm going to go back to PubMed. And once here, I'm going to log into my account. So I'm going to click on my account here and go to my dashboard, which is my NCBI. And if I scroll down here in the lower right, I can see where I can create my science CVs. So let me open one of these now. So I'm going to select this one right here. 
And I've not filled in any of the information here, but let me show you how your ORCID can help you to fill this in. Uh, and there are a number of sections where the ORCID can help you out. So the first one I'm going to look at is section A, my personal statement. So I can write my personal statement up here, but I can also select a number of uh, citations, four in this case, uh, to support that personal statement. So let me select this option, select citations, and you can, you can see there's a couple options, but the second tab is my ORCID. So I could go through here and select specific articles to include in this section. Okay. The other section where this helps is Section C, Contribution to Science. So for this, I can create up to five different contributions. So here's contribution one. I can click here to edit the description. And for this contribution, I can again select citations from my ORCID. I can then add another contribution to science edit and describe what that contribution is, and again, select publications from my ORCID, uh, which would help to back up my case for that contribution. I should back up for a moment to say that what I just described works because I've already linked ORCID to my, my NCBI account. And let me show you how I did that. I click my login here uh, to edit my account settings. On the subsequent page, you can see that it allows me to link my ORCID here. I've already done that for my account, and this is what allows me to use ORCID the way I just showed you during the creation of my Science CV profile. In conclusion, an ORCID is a persistent online CV for researchers. Creating an ORCID is easy, but it has to be maintained as your scholarly output and biographical information changes over time. However, there are ways of automating at least some of these functions. Finally, having an ORCID is important to researchers for a variety of reasons, not least of which is that it's increasingly required by more and more publishers and funding agencies. This concludes our session for today. Thank you for taking the time to listen to ORCIDs, Maintaining Your Online Identity, a part of the Get Yourself Published, Promote Your Research webinar series from the Himmelfarb Library at the George Washington University. If you enjoyed this webinar, please join us for the next installment in our series, Citation Organization for Beginners, which will be released on Wednesday, May 6th. Also, if you have time and are able to complete our exit survey, we'd appreciate your feedback. If you have any questions about the content covered in this session, please don't hesitate to email me at tph at gwu.edu. On behalf of the Himmelfarb Library Scholarly Communications Team, thank you for listening.